Hello everyone and welcome to our latest investment video, the topic of which is very popular at this moment, that being ESG investing, ESG standing for Environmental, Sustainable and Governance. And who better to explain this concept to you than Chris Kidd, Senior Associate Partner at Global Investment Managers and frankly, Global Leaders in ESG Investing, Saracen and Partners. But before we get into the video, it will be wonderful to receive your support for the channel by clicking the subscribe button below down there I think um, and if you found the content to be of value please leave a like by clicking the thumb symbol and perhaps even leaving a comment in the feed below um, but let's get on to the video Chris many thanks for your time today um, okay. ESG, ESG seems to be the big thing in asset management at this moment but it's is it not just another example of companies using a bit of hype to sell some funds it's a really good question. And, and, and to use an, an industry term, there is a lot of what we call greenwashing out there, uh, insofar as there are a lot of companies who are reinventing themselves as experts in this area to benefit from the trend that is going on. It doesn't make it easy for people to look through that and have a look at what they're actually doing. There's legislation that's coming out a bit later on um, uh, it, in the year that is going to help people differentiate between what people say and what people actually do. And that's the SFDR, which is a uh, sustainable financial um, disclosure regime. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but that's going to come out. It's, um, it's been delayed because of the European Brexit and so forth. It was European legislation, mm -hmm. but the FCA are going to gold plate it, we think, and going to, going to bring it into, into regulatory law. So you're going to see a lot more of this. As regards, um, uh, is it something new? No, it's not something new. Actually, uh, it has become, as you quite say, quite trendy at the moment, but it's been going on for an awful long time. I mean, if you think governance goes back to the 1600s when the first share was uh, issued for joint sale, and that was the uh, East India um, Company. And, and going back that far, as soon as the any company became registered for sale, you needed governance. So governance goes back a, a huge amount, social as well, the social ethics around how you run your company and what people want to invest in. And environmental, actually, uh, it gets all the headlines lately, but it's actually the newest of them all. Um, mm -hmm. and, 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 and because of all the publicity with David Attenborough, Greta Thunberg, mm -hmm. uh, and a huge amount of press coverage is becoming very, very relevant at the moment. So. Um, it, it, it's not a new thing, but you're going to see more and more of it going forward. And it can be a very, very successful way to invest your money while sleep at night strategy as well. Yeah. Well, okay. That's fantastic. Um, now, I think you've got a video that can kind of encapsulate everything that you've gone through. Yeah, I'm going to show you a, sh a short video. Uh, and all it is, is really is the, the history of the E part of the E, the S and the G to show you how long and what's been going on in this sector over a, a, about the last 50 years. Okay, great. We have to learn a lot more about the Earth and about the system that we live in. Right now, we're facing a man-made disaster of global scale, our greatest threat in thousands of years, climate change. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction talk about is the money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth.
by emotive stuff, eh? Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what I was going to say. Quite very powerful stuff. So if that's the E, the environmental, um, and I, I have no doubt at all that everyone watching this will, will understand, they'll have been touched somehow by, by this over the last few years. Um, why the S and the G? Yeah, good question. Uh, let me just share something with you. So the way that we look at this is um, in, in this way. So it's a bit of a uh, euphemism. It's, it's called cowboy and the space, mon space man economies. And, and the way we look at this is that this comes from a, an essay written by Kenneth Balding, an economist in the 1960s, just shows you how far this goes back. But he talked about the fact that we were currently, or at that time, living in this cowboy economy. And if you think about all the films we used to see in the olden days, it used to be that people used to drive the cattle onto a nice green piece of field. They used to deplete all of the resources there. The cows used to eat all of the grass. And then when it was all gone, they'd move on. There was no, um, there was, there was no limits to, the, to, to growth. There was no limits to what you could do. And of course, that can't happen anymore. You've got to think about conservation. We're not in that position anymore. And so we need to live much more in this spaceman economy. We need to live in this uh, economy where we are floating around space on a planet, just like a spaceship, just like if you like, the space center is, is, is revolving around the earth. And we need to conserve literally every piece of our resources, whether it comes down to water, food, uh, anything we can do to conserve because we are currently using all the resources of the, um, the world and another one as well. So when you say um, the E and the S, what we need to try and the G as well, is we need to try and identify investment themes, if you like, that have longevity in that environment. And you can see here what we think are going to be the winners, are either sustainable, lower risk regulation and lower risk of consumer backlash against the slightly more unsustainable mm -hmm. themes. And there's some fairly obvious ones there. You know, obviously fast fashion is, is getting a lot of news at the moment about the amount of garments we throw away at the end of each year. Um, and nitrogen, oil and coal, of course, lots and lots of uh, uh, fossil fuels that we're just never ever going to need are still under the ground and still being accounted for. But look at the things that are uh, investable and are sustainable, which is digital media, the cloud more and more, machine intelligence, AI, smart grids, loads and loads of great investment. So we need to look at that much more than, than the older type industries. And I don't think anyone's going to disagree with the, um, the advent and the takeover of those main industries. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about looking at the social issues, why the S and why the the G, well, when you look at a, a company, you have to try and look at the risks they're running when you're valuing it. You need to look at how they deal with their suppliers, what's their relationship, how do they deal with them, and their employees, of course, what sort of relationship do they have with employees, what risks are they run in there? How do they treat their customers? Uh, do they let bribery and corruption pervade their business? And they may not be contributing to, but they mustn't obviously degrade a cohesive society. That's really, really important when you're looking at any company when you're valuing it. So whatever you think about the E, the S and the G, there is a real hard nosed, cold investment side to this. Mm. Why would you want to invest in a company that has poor social record? Mm -hmm. And the same when it comes to governance factors. Um, uh, you, you could be looking at things like um, the board structure, which is really, really important. Make sure you've got all the voting rights that you need. Um, you need to have the raw reporting and controls and make sure the auditor is all in place. Some of the biggest corporate disasters we've had over the last hundred years has been around poor auditing and poor reporting and controls. Mm -hmm. Is executive remuneration in line with the, the uh, shareholder mm -hmm. um, uh, needs and so forth? And of course, what are the business ethics? Are they running uh, an ethical business? So what you can understand the e it gets an awful lot of press at the moment absolutely yeah. but you've also got to think about all those other issues when you're valuing companies yeah absolutely um looking at how an investor would actually um place this within a portfolio what what you know what considerations do they need to have what place does it have in, a, in an investment portfolio 
Well, it should be absolutely core. I mean, there is no reason to invest in companies with core E, S and G. If you think about them, they are just extra things that you have to look at when valuing a company. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example um, of when you are looking at, when we're looking at companies and what we're looking for when we invest on behalf of people. And I, I would add to this point, there is no need to compromise from performance to investing in this way. Absolutely not. In fact, if you look at the performance of sustainable, responsible funds, they've been very, very strong over the last two, three, four, five years uh, and have outperformed the, the, the normal, um, less, if you like, responsible, sustainable funds. So let's take a couple of examples here. You've got Coca-Cola, a very well-known company, and you've got the poster child of, uh, of sustainable investing, which is Austed on the right-hand side. So when we look at the E, the S, and the G of a company, when we're looking at the investment risk, you can see that Coca-Cola here, firstly, on climate change, they use an awful lot of CO2 in the um, um, manufacture of their product and the distribution of their product. Now, of course, there's carbon taxes coming in, so that's going to hit their profits. You then look at the circular economy, and that means recycling of the products. Now, Coca-Cola pump out 100 billion plastic bottles into our environment every single year. People are talking about plastic taxes. That's already in place in certain areas. That's going to hit their profits. And then, of course, when you look at the S, their customers are hooked. And, of course, we have a massive obesity problem around the world, and in particular in the US. So why would you want to invest in a company like that that has all of those headwinds? Why not invest in a company which is at the forefront of renewable energy. This uh, company, Orsted, runs and is the biggest wind farm operator in the world. They, if you are by any coast, and I'm sure if you're where you are, uh, Andrew, up uh, in the northeast, if you look out into the sea, you will see these windmills, and it's probably Orsted that's running that wind farm. And apart from a couple of small things where they've got to obviously dispose of these massive turbines, and they also buy, uh, still burning a bit of biofuel in, in Denmark, where they come from, Actually, that company looks much more investable. So you, you build that into your valuations and you create a unit trust or an OIC of like-minded companies, low-risk companies that have got low risk of regulation or, or, or harm to the environment in the future, and therefore they make much, much better investments. So where does it fit in? In my view, it's absolutely core. Cool. Why would you want to invest in companies with poor ESG? They just don't have the same future as companies that do have um, good ESG going forward. That's that's fantastic. I think I think honestly, Chris, that's probably the the best encapsulation of of why ESG considerations should be made for investing um, than than, I, than I've heard. So so absolutely fantastic. Um, to 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 wrap up. Like you said at the beginning, there's a lot of companies talking about ESG, greenwashing, uh, the term that you used. Um, and there's a lot of really, really big global um, investment managers out there, a lot of which are much, much bigger than Saracen. But why should we be listening to Saracen? Um, well, it's always difficult to, I, I don't want to turn it into a, a massive sales pitch, but we do believe at Saracen we have something um, uh, is very special and that is a heritage in this area so of the 17 billion that we run around 7 billion of that is on behalf of charities very absolutely household name charities in the in the UK and in, the, in Europe as well and those charities are very very um, discerning buyers of product they want to be represented with the companies with whom we invest they want to make sure that they're not investing in an embarrassing way you can imagine the some of the big charities, if they were seen to be investing in some poor quality companies, that the press would be all over that. So it's very, very important. So we look at the, and have looked at the E, the S and the G on behalf of the companies and the clients for many, many years, going back to the 1980s. You can imagine a medical charity not, charity not wanting to invest in tobacco or perhaps alcohol producing, or perhaps an education charity under pressure from their uh, students not to invest in or on oil and gas. And that gas and actually to disinvest from those. So we have a long history of doing this. It's not just about the exclusions though, it's about the positiveness of looking at good sustainable businesses going forward and, and making sure that the E, S and the G is actually looked at in, in, a, in a positive way as, a well, as well as just a negative way. Uh, and we believe that by looking at sustainable companies using a thematic investment proposition going forward, but having that underlying E, S and G overlay as well as all the valuation as well as all the other modeling that we do 
gives us a great advantage in the marketplace. And 17 billion, okay, it's not as big as some of those other companies out there, but it's perfectly uh, adequate from a point of view of investing and, and all of our funds are of a reasonable size. So it's not just about size, it's about quality of research, quality of knowing what you do, and in our view, a heritage uh, and a long time of, of doing this with, with great credentials. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think that the heritage part, the the, the history of of, of of you guys actually um, doing this, living and breathing it and, and, and being an intrinsic part of your processes is something that investors need to consider rather than just going for, uh, like you say, someone who is who is basically coming to the marketplace, greenwashing for marketing purposes. But let's leave it at that. Uh, Chris, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Uh, I'm sure everyone who watches the video will, will, will have a much greater understanding of ESG investing and where they should be considering it uh, within their portfolios. Thanks very much for your time and I'm sure we'll catch up soon. Thank you very much, Andrew.